right. Thanks, Paul. You know, um, and he, you know, one of the one of the things with uh, with Paul Franco is uh, he was putting on his uh, his good Yeti mic and um, oh wait, hold on, the cable just uh, popped. Um, hold on, uh, that was Indian news. Never mind. The cable just popped up here. I thought I was just you know, making sure there wasn't some sort of headline. A lot of times when uh, you see a real quick move, like I'll give you an example. Yesterday, yesterday, uh, Canada announced uh, that uh, they were going to start talking about, um, you know, the dairy, uh, the dairy issues with, uh, with with the U.S. and the U.S. dollar Canadian actually went from. 111, and I happen to be not looking at the headlines, but in front of my computer, and I was looking at price action, and I saw the Canadian react first, and it dropped to 131, and I looked over to my right, the headline had already just been released, like, you know, I don't know, three seconds earlier, so I shorted the US dollar Canadian, then Twitter got a hold of it, uh, about, uh, you know, a couple of 10 or 15 seconds later, it was already trading at 80. Uh, and as soon as Twitter got a hold of the, the headline, I covered uh, and made a quick 20 pips, just scalped it short. And then obviously we continued to drop for the next half an hour. But, uh, and I, and, you know, in retrospect, I should have stayed in, but I didn't, um, you know, I left a good 40 pips off the table. But a lot of times you'll see, when 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 I have these when I see these headlines and let me just show you you know this is this is Bloomberg and um, this is a Bloomberg you know this is a news um, uh, headline um, you know thing that I have if 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 I'm on it and I'm catching it and I can see something moving uh, when when these headlines release. Uh, you know, I can I can catch the move usually, uh, you know, two, three, five, ten seconds before most other people. You know, by the time you guys see it, uh, you know, especially like on Twitter or somewhere else, I've I've already I've already gotten in and out of a trade. Um, that you know, Bloomberg is not cheap either, uh, and this is how the guys that 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 uh, that I trade with in the office that I trade with. Uh, specifically trade they trade on a lot of these headlines they they obviously take positions in the market as well um, you know based on you know a macro theme that they're they're trading on but they use these headlines uh, and and you can see this is like a, a, a bigger uh, headline um, uh, segment that I see a, a lot of little minor stuff or what might be viewed as minor more minor um, things but still fairly important headlines uh, when when those when those headlines do cross, uh, you know, if I happen to be listening in and 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 looking at, it, I can catch a move usually before most people. Uh, it is it's expensive, you know, to to have a Bloomberg system. Uh, one of the reasons why the, the guys in, in the the guys that I trade with in Greenwich, Connecticut, they're wired in um, a certain configuration to New York. To get these headlines, maybe even you know sometimes a a, a, fl a few split seconds faster than than most other places, which gives them a little bit more of an edge. But you know, uh, Bloomberg terminals are cheap. I pay twenty eight hundred dollars a month. Personally, it comes out of my comes out of my paycheck. Basically, twenty eight hundred dollars a month is is, uh, is is how much it. it, it, it runs to have the system but you know you have to be able to leverage it too and sometimes when i you know if i see price action move like i was looking at the cable and a little a little spike up if 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 it starts to move like that and i and i wasn't looking at the uh, news release then you know i'll, I'll uh you know, glance over, and if it seems something that's really, you know, worthy of me me pressing the button, I'll get in, um, and I'll and I'll usually just scalp the market, and that's that's usually how I end up paying for my service every month, is just getting a few scalps like that, uh, like the one that I did yesterday in the Canadian. I mean, you know, it was it was a you know decent amount of money, and 
you know, 20 seconds worth of work. So uh, now let's talk about tomorrow, not necessarily today. And and I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna tell you guys that uh, a, a couple things. <laughs> if I sound tired today, I am. Uh, last, <laughs> you guys, this is this is funny. How many how many of you guys are married? How, how many how many of you guys are married and have been married for more than you know? few years anybody married in here I, I've got hundreds of traders that are listening in right now and you got at least a few of you guys are married guys and girls uh, yeah okay um, so my wife and I we've uh, we've celebrated we're celebrating our 15 year anniversary today now uh, it, it's 15 years ago today we got married in in Greece uh, this picture here this, uh, this picture of my wife and I here that was in um, that was in Milos, Greece, 15 years ago. You can see actually the Greek priest, Orthodox priest, back there. Uh, this is a little. Let me see. Uh, give me give me a second. I'll, I'll pull this up for you guys. So I'm going to show you guys where we got married. Um, this is uh, we got married in Milos, and we got married at. Uh, the, well, this is this is the actual church. So we got married. No, no, no. I'm sorry. That's not it. Hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll show you when I find it. Well, this is it right here. But this is not a good photo of it. We stayed up, but there's a windmill up here. But um, the better photo of that specific church is. Where the hell did that photo go that uh, we always see? Um, maybe that's a is. random one. Nobody will know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so true. It's so true. This this is it right here. Actually, that is the right church. This is it right here because when when uh, Roman, uh, my my youngest son, he got uh, he got baptized. We are all sitting out here on the, the little foyer. Th th this is it. Th this is this is the I church. Think, you know, Blake, I've been in the church, and it, it requires a little bit of walking uh, it, upstairs to to get there. It, so I'm guessing it, it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yes. So I'm guessing all the guests, or you know, wearing like wedding dress, etc., couldn't have been yep. that easy. <laughs> no, um, we we actually uh, we. We we rented at that time, and this is you know this is 15 years ago. Uh, my my father-in-law got us a, a a Suzuki Samurai. You you know those little Jeep-looking things. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a Suzuki Samurai. And remember, we're on an island with only a few thousand people, so uh, you know the, the 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 selection of vehicles when you're on an island is very it's very tough. limited and very expensive yeah. for what you get. Oh yeah, yeah. So we had a we had a Suzuki Samurai, white Suzuki Samurai, and it had the top down, and you know, and it and it hauled uh, my wife Lisa up to the at least to the to the front of the church, or not the front, the the um, uh, uh, the walkway. Uh, where that's not it. Um, the the walkway that goes up to the church. Uh, it took her up to there, and then they had to they had to walk the rest of it, you know, as as far as they could go. Anyway, um, I I guess I was and I was I was trying to joke around a little bit because the reason why I'm so tired is that I was about ready to go to sleep last night. My wife goes, uh, I got to run to the um, I got to run to the the store to go get some eyeliner. I'm like. It's like nine o'clock at night, and nine o'clock when you get up at three is, you know, it's obviously six hours before I'm waking up. She goes, "I got to run to the store and get some eyeliner." I'm like, "I'm like, okay, all right, I'm going to bed." And then I was laying in bed, and she goes, and I'm like thinking, "She's not going to get eyeliner." I'm like, "She's going to give me a card." <laughs> So she got home like half an hour later. I'm like, you find some eyeliner? She goes, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go I'm going to go get some eyeliner, too. Because <laughs> <And, and, laughs> I forgot to get a card. <laughs> so, see, this is what happens after 15 years of marital bliss is you, uh, you, you're like, oh, crap. Uh, we had an eyeliner as a mom. <laughs> no, we have, but we had, uh, we had some, 
you know, knowing today was our our uh, our, our wedding uh, or our anniversary, it's like it's like we forgot to get each other cards until the last minute before you know the night. And so I actually went to the grocery store and I got her a card and I got her a uh, uh, a um, uh, <laughs> some flowers, but. But jokes aside, we we're actually going to California here in the next month and a half to go celebrate. We're going to spend a couple of days in wine country just because uh, it's our kids' fall break. So, you know, we'll have somebody come stay at our house or watch our house, and then we we'll, we'll take the kids to the in-laws to my my mother's home and drop the kids off there, and then we'll go to wine country. So we're actually doing our celebrating like a month and a half from now. That that was pre-planned. But so when it comes on to comes up to the day of our anniversary, uh, you know. Um, I had to go get some eyeliner. That's just that's how it happens. And if you've been married for any length of time, it happens. You know, it's. <laughs> but if I sound tired, that's why. And the good news is I'm tired ahead of uh, what I think is going to be a big deal in the markets tomorrow. I I I, I was long some. Um, I, well, I. I Picked up some Aussie U.S. dollar last night, and and there's a pattern in play that I put in for the Aussie. So, and I put it in yesterday. I have traded the Aussie long twice since yes, since I think I put it in yesterday. Ten nine nine ten. Oh, two days ago, I've traded the Aussie long twice since putting this uh, pattern in play in. Okay, I've bought it. I bought it here, sold it there, bought it last night. At uh, at at uh, uh, seventy ninety seven, sold it this morning at seventy one twenty. So, you know, I've been I've been buying it, and and I plan on buying it again. I actually am bullish the the Aussie dollar. Um, the reason why is we're on this major confluence of support. You can see the uh, one hundred and sixty one percent extension right here. There's there's a hundred there's one hundred and sixty one percent extension of this move, one hundred and sixty one percent extension of this move. It gives us a lot of support down here. And um, so I've been buying the Aussie on these dips to 71 cents. It's like, okay, every time it dips down to 71 cents, I buy it. I might even do that again today, if, if later today, if I can get it. Uh, I do think it's going to eventually break higher. Um, and I do think that the dollar is going to weaken tomorrow. Now, I may be wrong. I, I may be completely wrong. Maybe the euro goes to 114, but I do I do think that the the that the dollar is going to weaken tomorrow. I think the euro is actually going to strengthen following the ECB. However, we are in this wedge, and we are still in the apex of this wedge. So what I am looking to do is I'm looking to buy the euro dollar on a dip below 115.50 today. I don't know if we're going to get it today. Um, I'm hoping that we are, but. Uh, I really think that we are range bound in the FX market. So if you're out there getting super directional, you're buying the euro, you're shorting the euro, you're 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 getting aggressively long the dollar or getting aggressively short the dollar, you're going to be uh you, you're going to be at risk of getting whipped around in my opinion. I do eventually think that this is going to happen. Okay? The euro dollar is going to break higher. I think the cable is going to break higher. I think the cable is going to break higher. I think the Aussie is going to break higher. I think the Kiwi on the 127% extension is going to break higher. I think the dollar Canadian is going to break lower down to this trend line here. I can't grab it. There it is. I think the the, the Canadian is going to break lower. Uh, not really too sure. Well, I guess the Swiss is just, yeah, it's still in a downtrend. It's going to, it's going to break lower, you know? So I do think the dollar is going to weaken. I have no dollar position on right now. I am not, um, Wait, hold on. Who is you? Iwa, Iwa said I'm not interested in weddings. Look, this is a free webinar. If you don't lo like what I do here, you feel free to leave, or I will reject. I will eject you out of here. We like to personalize these webinars because, look, I'm friends with these with with most of the people here. Okay. I've been broadcasting for years. 
for 15 years, I've been broadcasting to most of these people. And I have a personal relationship with most of them. If you don't like it, leave. You got it? Do you understand? Okay. So, um, anyway, going back to the going back to the dollar. Um, uh, going back to the dollar. So I expect the dollar to actually continue to weaken. Um, I expect the dollar to continue to weaken, but I, that doesn't mean I'm I'm actually short the dollar yet. I am if 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 the euro dollar does dip to a level that I feel that is attractive, like which would be down here, down to this wedge support, that's the place that I, I, I'm I'm interested. At this point in time, I took my Aussie long off the table. I was short the U.S. dollar Swedish krona. I took that off the table. Um, uh, I actually shorted the U.S. dollar Canadian last night at 77 uh, when it was up here last night at 77. Uh, at 130.77, and I closed it. So, I, you know, I'm, and I closed it this morning, and I took that off the table as soon as I got up. And if you guys are in the in the forex analytics, here's the uh, forex analytics chat room. Um, uh, uh, if you're if you're in the forex analytics chat room, I I told everybody this morning that I, I picked up the the dollar on the uh, on the short side overnight, and then I just closed everything out. I'm not willing to sit in the market when we're right in the middle of the apex of this wedge. I'm just not willing to do it, okay? This is, you're, you're in no man's land at this point in time, okay? You're right here, you're in no man's land. Okay, so unless you're gonna be short at the very upper end of the, the, the wedge, which, you know, this is a bearish wedge, if you, if, 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 meaning there's lower highs and consistent lows. If you're at, not at the upper end of this, at, of this, of this wedge, it, it doesn't make sense to be short. You can be short at 116.15, maybe being, maybe being long, and this is what I'm thinking, is being long down here at 115.40, that's what I'd rather do. And the reason why you do that, and let me, let me kind of explain to you from a tactical standpoint. Tomorrow at this time, so tomorrow uh, at, uh, at, at, at 8 a.m. Eastern, just before the ECB meeting, take, take a guess where you think that we're going to be trading at in the euro dollar, if I'm right, and, and what I think, guess where we're going to be trading at tomorrow, 24 hours from now? Oh, oh, uh, I have been listening for two days. Let's see. Uh, goodbye. See you later. I had just ejected that person. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just removed him from the webinar. Um, yeah, so uh, I haven't done that in years, by the way. I have not done that in years. Um, Felt good, though. It Didn't did. It? it felt great. It felt great. I mean, and I was like, somebody said, she said, uh, or whoever said, uh, uh, you you sound extremely rude and possibly rude. I'm leaving. I'm like, good. I just ejected you. Uh, goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you later. By the way, I have a surprise for you. I went back in my, my pictures and I found the church you got married, you know, from a picture of mine. And oh, yeah. I also found, found you. The samurais, the samurais we rented when we were on the island. <laughs> oh, really? That's so funny. You have to show me a little later. Okay, okay awesome. Um, let me let me finish on my thoughts here. So, yeah, like, so, so on the euro dollar, um, I think that we're going to end up right where we're at right now. So, literally, like, 24 hours from now, I imagine that we're going to be trading at 115.70, 115.80. Now, what does that mean? Well. That means that, and then let me let me delete this for a second. So let me um, let me let me explain to you how what I mean by that. So if you get here, and the, 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 you can you can position yourself any way you want. I'm just going to tell you how I'm going to position myself. If I feel that eventually the dollar is going to move lower and the euro is going to break higher, then that means I'd like to be long right here, right? Okay, because if we dip 
today and then we end up right here, okay? That means that I bought it at, let's just say 115.40. We, we're trading at 115.80. Then I can put my stop below my, my target or my, my entry or even at break even. And if I'm wrong, then it doesn't cost me anything, right? Following the ECB meeting tomorrow. Now, let's say that, um, let's say that, you know, we're, let's say you, you, you want to take the opposite of that trade, which is, is fine. I, I'm not telling you I'm right. I may be 100% wrong tomorrow. Like I may be, you know, I expect the Euro to strengthen, but the Euro is going to weaken, you know, Mario Draghi. I don't know if this is his last meeting. I'm pretty sure it's his last. Is this his last meeting? I don't know if it's his last meeting, but you know, Let's say he 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 does his his droggy thing and then just talks down the euro and it breaks down. Well, if it rallies to one sixteen fifteen, and you want to short it, like and and we end up here tomorrow. Well, you short it at one sixteen fifteen, and then you know if it reverses, you have your stop at break even or you know slightly above your your entry, and you lose you know just a little bit, you know and if you're wrong. But if you're right. You've got 40 pips of runway. So, in my opinion, you it, 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 as long as we stay confined to this this range, you can you can find yourself a better entry point than being right in the middle of the range. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, um, uh, you know, you know, I, I I really I really I really hope it does. And that that's to me that to me is how I want to play it. I you know right now. I just don't know if there's, you know, it's just not the right, it's not the right price. So I, I would rather, I would rather find a better place, a more tactical entry point than smack dab in the middle of the range, because we are probably going to break out tomorrow. I, I would be real, I'm going to be a little bummed out if we don't, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a little bummed out if we don't get some sort of, some sort of move out of this wedge tomorrow but but knowing that it's the ecb tomorrow and the and the bank of england on um it's the ecb tomorrow and the bank of england on uh tomorrow as well we should get some sort of you know some sort of breakout um and and while you're in the middle of the range there's just not not a lot of reason to to be doing that now i'm going to talk a little bit more about i want to talk about the the headline that came out yesterday so um the headline that came out yesterday regarding the Canadian was, uh, let's see, Canada is said ready to include U.S. dairy in NAFTA talks. So the two big uh, NAFTA uh, negotiating points for the U.S. and Canada is dairy and autos, right? Those are the two big, you know, and you got your sunset clause as well, but really it's all um uh it's all it's 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 you know dairy or or autos and autos excuse me so canada's ready to include dairy in the negotiations but that was already uh and i was listening to the bloomberg um uh squawk uh vincent's uh signor i don't i can't spell it, pronounce his name correctly he's he's awesome though I was listening to him, uh, 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 his commentary about um, NAFTA, which I agree yesterday that the dairy was expected to be a, dis uh, a talking point. So what I'm when this moved down here in the dollar Canadian, I, I didn't want to stick around long, or I'm happy I didn't stick around long because of what he said. It, you know, I'm like, oh, that was kind of expected already. Now the reason why you have to be a little careful on this dollar Canadian dip. It tells you two things, right? The first thing is, and this is this is something that you got to think about, and this is something I told everybody in the chat room yesterday. I'm like, it tells us two things. One, NAFTA is not not even close to being done yet, right? NAFTA is not even done to, uh, close to being done because they, they still haven't even tackled d dairy yet. Um, uh, but two, they are making progress, or at least Canada's back at the table. So therefore, I, it's not like I'm sitting here looking at the dollar Canadian expecting it, or yesterday, expecting it to go straight down to 128. The only way this is going to happen right here is, is if you have full-fledged dollar weakness. But 
at the same time, that also means that I would really like to sell the dollar Canadian on rallies because progress is being made. So in my opinion, if we can get a move back up to like, you know, 131.20, 131.30, some, somewhere up here, maybe, may, you know, this, I mean, maybe it's even here that, that maybe that's, that's, you know, as far as we're going to rally something, um, uh, and, uh, Henrique said uh, dispute resolution panel as well. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of things that, that that still need to be discussed regarding NAFTA that hasn't been addressed. I do think that they are making um, progress, but you know we we thought they've been making progress for the last seven or eight months. So you know I guess we're getting close, right? Yeah, I hope we're not saying that six months from now. But anyway, I still think the dollar Canadian moves lower. I just I'd rather sell rallies than sell, you know, if we break into new lows here, I mean, the last thing I'm going to be doing is chasing this lower, unless it, there there is a headline like NAFTA is done, like it's like they're signing a deal. I'm not going to do, uh, you know, I'm not chasing it lower. So what I'd rather do is, you know, sell rallies at this point, you, you know, if, if given the opportunity. Um, so with that being said, uh, uh, I'm going to pass it over to my colleagues, Steve and Stelios, that are probably a little less uh, hot-tempered than myself. Uh, uh, sorry, guys, I had to I had to kick somebody out of here, but, you know. We, we are Greek, you. remember. We are Greek. <laughs> I'll never forgive you for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I can't believe that, you know, somebody's like, you know, I, I mean, look, I, I spend more time with, with people on this webinar than I do with my family members. Yeah, that's yeah but you're not so getting the my liners. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but, but, but still, I mean, it's like, you know, I, I've, I have such a personal relationship with everybody on this, this webinar. So when, you know, somebody that comes in and, and, and just, you know, like, oh, I don't want to hear about your wedding. Like, you know what, screw you. Yeah, you know, look, I give you a lot of my time, you know, just trying to give you a personal story. But very, very true. Anyway, very, very true. whatever. I'm, I, and, and on top of that, I'm tired, so I'm a little grumpy. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, uh, so uh, it looks like we're range bound today, guys. I, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm happy that I pulled uh, little profits off the table this morning. Nothing, nothing that, that doesn't make up what I need to make every day. Uh, but that, you know, when I, when I, when I trade, I don't, I don't look at every day like I need to make a certain amount of money. Or on average, I, I make I need to make a certain amount of money. But there are going to be days that are days like I think today's going to pan out where it's kind of choppy and we're we're waiting for a bigger move, you know, hopefully tomorrow. And I think that's today's going to be one of those days. I think I think we're going to be rage bound until uh, tomorrow, ECB and. Uh... Yeah, for the um, Bank of England, and but we have to remember we have PPI in one minute, and uh, you know the recent uh, pattern has been that PPI and CPI in most uh, economies have been surprising to the upside. So picking I think, up. yeah, they have been yeah, picking up too. I think the risk is for a, a better print, but you know we have to wait and see. Yeah, well here's a uh, here's um, PPI coming. I'll, I'll stick around for this really quick. I'll just hold on to the charts. Uh, here's the dollar yen. Uh, let's see, we are 30 seconds away. Is running like above 4% year on year, right? Uh, we, we're at uh, th three, 3 3.2. 3 3 yeah, so 3.2% right now, but you can see yeah, how it's trending it. higher. You know, see how it's, it's trending higher in PPI. Yeah, yeah so, so uh, you know, could be a strong print. Um, we'll wait. Let's see any second now. Two point eight, actually weak, weak. Wow, wow. Did not expect that. Wow. Did not expect that. Yeah. Wow. Dollar yen just dipped. Quite weaker than expected. Actually. Yeah. Yep. And um, everything came in weak. Eek. Jeez. Just when you think that, uh, just when you think inflation is going to rear its ugly head, you know, no, I don't get it. So anyway, uh, I'm I'm going to pass it over to you guys. But uh, before I do that there was something else I was going to say um, maybe a word about our sponsors 
Oh, maybe I should say a word about our sponsors. Hey, if you guys, uh, you know, have not checked out Forest Park FX, you should. It's uh, they and 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 if you're in the uh, if you're in the U.S., uh, you can you can actually. And I had actually people asking about this yesterday. They're like, "Wow, I can be part of the reimbursement program." Or if I'm in the United States, I'm like, "No, you can't be in part of the reimbursement program uh, and get Forex Analytics reimbursed, but you can get cashback rebates." So um, check yep. them out. I put the link in the in the audience, and you know, and if you're obviously in Europe or Asia or somewhere else, you can you can get involved in the reimbursement program so there's the link and Forest Park FX is a uh, great partner to have and at the very bottom of this page you'll see their um, Skype and their email right here and you can contact them it's at the very bottom of the page so uh, make sure you guys do that uh, when you can and it looks like the dollar yen might roll over here we are coming off uh, some trend line resistance here I mean you know the Shorting the the dollar yen from a risk reward perspective right now, and I and I'm not I'm not um, trading the dollar yen at the moment. But if you if you look, this is your risk. Your reward might be, you know, somewhere down here. If you're just going to trade against this trend line, you can short it, put your stops above 111.70, and you know, target like you know below 111. I mean, that that's that's you know. A possible trade not something I'm doing ahead of the ECB but I'm just saying for those of you that are really looking for for something especially with PPI a little weaker but anyway uh, I'm gonna pass it over to you guys so have a great day I'm gonna enjoy my 15-year uh, anniversary with my wife you do that mate enjoy Blake yeah. all right guys hey. to me and, and stick around for 30 seconds we're gonna have a, a two pictures to show you as I said oh yeah yeah Listen. yeah this is the church, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that is. Yes, it is, actually. Uh, oh, I like the lights. I like what they did. Since you asked for it, let me find the usual. It's a little bit. Oh, there they are. Samurizer. <laughs> that looks like we, we may have rented one of those. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and guys, this, that's what you do on the, those islands. Is you get this the, yeah. the coolest car you can find, and and, go and, with. and and let's keep it between us. But you also get to abuse them a lot. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I, hey, I, hey. We had actually tried if ours were amphibious. It more or less was. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> 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 See you guys. Have a great day. Bye bye, Blake. <laughs> bye, bye. So, Stel, uh, any words from you before we? Uh, by the way, I don't see any real follow through. I mean, yeah, uh, dollar did uh, pair back some some of the earlier gains. There's no question about it. Um, uh, the USD yen got rejected once again from 111.50. You can see it here at the bottom right. But other than that, we're not seeing any follow through. Yeah. And as Blake was explaining before. It's not that much of a surprise. I mean, I don't expect this to be like a day with that, that, that should yield much volatility. I do believe that the market is bracing for impact for tomorrow. Uh, liquidity should be thinning uh, the closer we get to tomorrow's events. I know that there are two ways you can approach, uh, you know, to, to tomorrow's um, uh, barrage of events. You know, you either stay out and, you know, monitor what's going to happen, see how we're going to close the week and see if there are some good opportunities. Or, you know, if this this is your trading style, you might want to fade, as Blake suggested before, you might fade some of the initial moves. I mean, uh, plenty of um, instruments uh, have some very well-defined uh, support resistance levels. So, uh, you know, uh, given that any move can happen tomorrow, if we tag some of those, you might want to uh, try to fade them uh, going the other side. Uh, Stelio, uh, any front, any any news from the uh, macroeconomic front? Did we have anything well, uh, special? Uh, not really, apart from the NAFTA news headlines that came out that Blake talked about. The only other thing that um, you know, kind of, uh, I, I, I noted and kind of worries me a little bit is uh, going back to Italy. There have been a couple of headlines and. Also, the, the the interesting thing is that the the Lega Nord party, so basically the the, the right wing uh, party, are now uh, clearly in the lead in polls. So they were 
and they were in the high 20s from what I remember in the elections. But now they're, I think last last uh, poll, they registered 34% and they're number one party by, by clear margin. And that cannot be, you know, they are, they can, I think they're considered to be a very um, unpredictable party and the combination of them with a five-star movement we said it before the italian elections it would be the most uh, the highest the high risk scenario and not only did it um, manifest but they're getting stronger now so you know uh, i'm slightly worried and i think that italy will come to the forefront again i don't know what the um, uh, the trigger will be or what the subject will be but you know these you know these guys are probably going to stir up a little bit of uh, <laughs> a little bit of trouble and, uh, one um, thing is for sure, we, we saw that in Greece as well. I mean, populist parties, you know, at the very beginning, they can even strengthen in popularity because they will immediately, you know, do, do a few things that are, you know, quite uh, appealing to, yeah. you know, the mass of voters. Uh, but, you know, for example, the current economic situation is more or less stabilized in the Eurozone, so it's easy not to have any uh, big issues uh, that are pending that can create a, a you know a problem having to do with uh, you know government management etc. Uh, but I do think that um, you know we they they will get in trouble at the first signs of um, an economic recession coming uh, you know a global economic recession or trouble in the eurozone because at that point um, the people that are voting for them and what they have actually um, uh, you know, their platform, their, their political platform will come in contrast to what they actually have to do to, you know, to improve the situation. So I think that, you know, they might have like a, a grace period as, 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 as long as things are calm, but things might get a lot tough for Italy uh, if with this combination of parties in the government, uh, we go into the next recession. So that's definitely going to be interesting to watch. There's no question and about the, it. And the other th interesting thing is that we're seeing this in, in politics in general. The direction is changing and you're seeing coalitions. Okay, maybe Greece is a, is a small country, but uh, we've seen it here. But in Italy, you see a coalition of a leftist party with a far-right party. You know, this never used to be the case in the past. Because, so, tell you, because tell you, uh, we, we, we've had this conversation multiple times. I'm really convinced, I mean, since many, many, many years ago, that the political spectrum is not uh, is not like a half circle. I think it's a full circle. So far right, far left actually meet at the other side. You know what I mean? Uh, if, if you see the, you know, the, how many, yeah, if you see the vast majority of the issues, I mean, they, they disagree on, on, on social issues uh, that have to do like with nationalism and um uh immigrants immigration immigration and all that platform but other than that they they are actually uh, very very uh, similar right which, yes so, and which which yeah. goes to show that this vote when people vote for you know leftist and you know, far right parties and they form a government it's more a protest vote against the what's been going on for you know the past few decades and you've seen this in europe many many countries so yeah it's it's um you know, this kind of protest vote can be very, very dangerous, in my opinion. Absolutely. There's no question about it. I, I, and, you know, I think during the next uh, recession, uh, let's hope it's going to be a recession and not a depression. Uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, uh, politically speaking, we're going to see some very interesting stuff happening. Uh, yeah. I doubt that, you know, it's going to end up very well for many countries. But definitely, uh, I think we're, we're going to have a lot of social unrest. I think there is a lot of social, um, uh, how can I say? Um, I, I think there's a, sol a lot of social unrest that has been uh, staying, you know, subdued, but it's, it's about to, 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 to implode, you know what I mean? I think there, there's just a catalyst missing for, yeah. Uh, yeah for a lot of yeah. bad developments to come around. Anyhow, let's yeah. go to our favorite uh, markets. Uh, obviously not much has changed since yesterday, but we, we still have a few things to have a look at. I know that, um, I know that Stelion, you need to help me. Let me start by talking about the USD card because we had a specific question about it. There was a question um, about me liking 131 and if that's still the case. Uh, yeah, actually that is still the case. Now, the, if the next question is, would I be buying it after yesterday's move? 
Not really, not yet, because yeah, I do like the fact that I believe there is a lot of potential for more upside. It might come from here, it might come from like 130, especially if we consolidate a little bit. Um, but I would definitely not be buying it here, uh, you know, prior to what's happening tomorrow, because tomorrow we have a lot of event risk and the dollar, one way or another, is going to be um, affected. So, uh, yeah, from a technical perspective, yesterday's drop was quite a big one, not exactly the best thing you want to see, but still hasn't really ruined the uh, technical situation here. I still believe that the prior move higher that actually penetrated through this descending channel is decently uh, impulsive. I am 1000% sure that no matter how you look at it, you cannot characterize this move lower as impulsive. So, you know, this move lower has very clearly uh, corrective characteristics. So the combination of that two, um, yeah, definitely uh, has me still favoring strongly uh, the potential of a resumption higher, uh, at least to retest 133. Um, so let's see, today so far we have a spinning top, which means more or less the market is undecided here or anyhow is consolidating yesterday's losses. Um, you know, I want to see a little bit more price action, but yeah, I think above 130 in, in general, USD card looks fine. Um, now, um, other than that, let's go have a look at a few more, not of the most popular pairs because, you know, Blake already covered them. First of all, let me say here that USD knock is, is finally playing uh, ball nicely. I mean, I expected that there would be one more push lower before anything else happened. And we do see this. I mean, uh, we're pushing lower. Ideally, I would want to see this move take us, uh, perhaps at these previous highs, confluencing more or less with a 50% uh, FIB of the last move high. So let's say 825 roughly, even down at 820. But I have to say here that, as you see, I had already drawn uh, such a move. Um, I'm afraid, and you know, it doesn't make from a macro perspective much sense. Let me go to the weekly. Uh, I'm afraid that USD NOC is actually very, very likely to end up breaking uh, to the upside at some point, right? Why? Because simply speaking, let me increase the size of the screen. Simply speaking, you know, this move lower, as we were showing before in the shorter term with the USD card, doesn't have any impulsive characteristics. I mean, uh, this move has been very, very, co very corrective in nature because it's overlapping. It's slow. I mean, we've spent so much time consolidating after a huge move higher. And in essence, we've gone more or less nowhere, right? So these kind of moves, you eventually expect them to break in the direction of the previous trend. There is no question where the previous trend was. I mean, it was uh, higher. So I know that Stages doesn't like that. I don't really understand it from a micro perspective either. Uh, but, you know, eventually, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised, I mean, to see this move, break, to, to, to see this consolidation break to the upside. Now, does that mean that we can't, you get rejected once again and find ourselves in the middle of the brains, you know, before something else happens. Yeah, sure it can. Sure it can. But, you know, we're close to resistance. The recent price action that we see here seems corrective. So I'm thinking here, if this is a correction, given the fact that we're now so close to trend line resistance, you can see here this blue intermittent line, which is the um, resistance that you were seeing on the weekly chart. I think that it's very likely that we're going to see a breakout rather soon. Regardless, um, you know, if you were shorting, uh, you know, when we were approaching the highs, uh, I think you should uh, start being a little bit careful because, as I said, the uh, a potential for a rebound uh, comes at, at 825. We're, we're not that far away anymore uh, from that level. And another indication that perhaps this move is corrective is monitoring what USD SEC is doing because, simply put, USD SEC seems to be consolidating. Um, I mean, this clearly looks like a bull flag, right? Uh, so I think it's even even better understood as a consolidation. Um, and I do think that USD SEC has the potential of pushing higher as well. So can we actually uh, completely change? Sorry. Can we actually completely change the technical picture by breaking down from this ascending trend line? 
Sure we can, but unless we do that, I will definitely uh, be expecting that a break higher is the more likely scenario. Now let's have a look at the metals. And Stelio, if we have any questions, go yep, ahead. And as come. soon as you're done with the metals, I can uh, I can have a look. Okay, so metals, uh, gold still riding this uh, descending uh, channels uh, trend line resistance. So far, this move lower for gold uh, doesn't look impulsive. To be honest, for every day that passes, I start feeling a little bit more uncomfortable with being long, but not enough for me to abandon my thesis that there is one more leg missing to the upside. And as Gregor was saying yesterday, and I totally agree with that, I do believe that uh, tomorrow can actually, you know, a, a, a move, an actual move, he showed you how nicely they're correlated Euro USD and, and uh, gold. I think that tomorrow uh, a move higher in, in uh, Euro can actually finally lead um, gold to break the upside as well. In which case, my target is the 38.2 of the last leg lower, which comes at 1238.40. Um, that's what where I'm going to be looking to get rid uh, of my position. So I still maintain uh, my thesis that there is a good chance that we have at least one more leg to the upside uh, before anything else happens, which likely is a, a move lower to resume. I mean, uh, you know, we need to see a lot more than breaking above 12.38 to actually turn bullish, uh, you know, in the medium or long term in, in gold. Now, having to do with silver, silver tagged yesterday almost to the pip, um, the flash crash low at, uh, at 13.91, roughly. Um, so, uh, you know. I think it can even push a little bit lower, but definitely we're seeing a divergence here. I mean, uh, silver has been uh, has been trading to new lows even yesterday. It actually uh, intraday uh, pushed lower, while gold is certainly diverging. So these kind of divergences, you know, I, I, I monitor closely. You can you you can find these kind of divergences between similar currency pairs, metals, and many times they point to a turn in the market. For example. Uh, timing uh, a reversal in the Aussie or Kiwi by seeing the other one diverging, like seeing you know new highs in one, uh, the other one not following, or new lows in one, the other one not following. So you can use that method in in several markets when two markets are actually very closely correlated to uh, each other. Okay, so uh, for silver, you know uh, everything has to do with this descending channel. I, I think it's it's very clearly defined. Um, we need to see a breakout from this descending channel. In essence, I would want to see uh, a break above 14.30. I think that you know a move above uh, $14.30 uh, can open uh, some upside. Uh, why not? I mean, $15, I think, can come easily uh, or even a little bit higher towards this uh, previous support at 15.20. Um, and you know, given the fact that people have turned extremely bearish, and COTs are showing uh, every single week even more uh, a record uh, one-sided positioning um, for both the medals. I, I do think that there is a very, very good potential that once they actually snap back and you know they, they start rebounding only by position covering, we might end up getting bigger moves than even we initially expect. Okay. Uh, so um, having said that. Let's go to copper. Your uh, your sound is crackling. Copper. The more time I spend, it's not breaking up. It's crackling. Just keep keep talking. I'll tell you if it uh, carries on. Okay, Stella, you go ahead and tell me. So uh, I'm I'm on my 4G router, by the way. I'm not on my connection. It's, it's better. Know. It's better now. It's it's much better now. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know, the more time copper spends here consolidating in what looks to be like a triangle, uh, obviously the higher the chances that this is going to be resolved to the downside, in which case I'm going to be looking for the next area of support, which is at 245. So, you know, for every day that passes and we don't make it above 273, uh, you know, the chances of another push lower towards uh, you know, that support area, uh, they, they, they definitely increase. 
Now, um, unsurprisingly, the metal that's better behaved, and we, we were saying that, is palladium. And not only that, just look at this. I mean, we had a V shaped recovery in palladium. We had an extremely nice follow through. As I expected, I had mentioned that the 1000 zone is a very hard zone to crack. The 200 daily moving average is there. Uh, it's, it's a psychological, a very strong psychological level that has acted in the past as support resistance. Um, so, you know, we, we are seeing the 1000 level restricting uh, price action, holding uh, out. Now, on the other hand, what's missing here is a breakdown. So, you know, as I was saying before with copper, the more we consolidate without rebounding, the harder the chance that it's going to break lower. The exact opposite is true here with palladium. I mean, we are consolidating, but we remain near the highs. And for every day that we remain near the highs and we don't break down from 1,000, the higher the chance that we're actually going to see some push higher. And once we break 1,000, we might see another leg unfold uh, to the upside. So I have to say that once again, if I had to choose one of the medals, um, I think that you know palladium looks more bullish than the rest. There's no question about now. Of course, there's the question, okay, where would you place your stop loss? And, you know, this is what makes this uh, this potential trade a little bit tricky because just, I mean, take this day, uh, it was the 18th of September, as an example. That day, like, we had like a move lower of from the highs of roughly $40 and the metal ended up uh, closing unchanged on the day. So... You know, it's a little bit tricky uh, finding after that v safe recovery that we had, um, you know, a, a, play, a reliable place to place your um, stop loss. And then so then you can measure a target and, and, and feel comfortable about it. So, you know, that's what keeps me uh, sidelined having to do with uh, Palladium. Stelio, uh, tell me what kind of questions we have. I bet that uh, yes. some of the... We have three or four okay. questions so far. Okay, well, let's start with uh, Sterling Aussie. Our friend Morris is asking. Oh, yeah, that. sure. Let's have a look at Pound Aussie, Pound Kiwi, uh, Pound Cad, why not? So, Pound Aussie, let's start by that. Okay, uh, you know, unquestionably a very strong move higher, uh, even managed to break through this uh, previous support area. I, I, I believe that it would act as resistance, given the fact that we had already seen much of a move, um, but it, it actually didn't. So, um, you know, it's undoubtedly quite strong. I would expect that this area might act as support. We, we're definitely seeing, first of all, some momentum loss. We, we already hit, I mean, we went from uh, an RSI that was below 30 to an RSI that was above 70. Um, so, you know, some pullback even down to uh, 180.40, those peaks right there, you know, might, uh, might be due. Uh, but, you know, depends on how strong the market is, we might just dip down to 181.70, this previous support area, retest it once again as support in this case, and then resume to the upside. One thing is for sure, there is no sign yet that we should be turning bearish. There are only signs for the time being that there is finally some bullish momentum loss but that doesn't doesn't say much in a strong market because you might see some signs of momentum loss see some horizontal consolidation in a sense and you know from there keep moving um higher now pound kiwi uh as as i had explained several days ago um i i preferred pound kiwi to the upside than pound Aussie. why simply because pound kiwi had a very well-defined and structured uh, technical formation. It was this symmetrical triangle. And, you know, if you actually played the breakout from the triangle, you, you should be already comfortably uh, in profit. So, you know, the situation with um, Pound Q is quite, quite simple. As long as we trade above this symmetrical triangle, it remains bullish. Uh, keep in mind, though, that many times triangles produce final thrusts. So, um, you know, if you actually bought the breakout, that's great. Um, but, you know, usually I hesitate buying triangle breakouts later on. So, you know, I either decide to buy the breakout itself or I then, you know, leave it and see if if it will actually like, you know, push through a little bit and then 
reverse because triangles tend to do that as well. They tend to break in the direction of the 10, but on the other hand, uh, that breakout tends to be the final move before seeing a bigger correction. So uh, obviously the previous high here at 198.40 um, should be the first area of support in case we move lower. And as I said, the broken triangles the resistance uh, should also be an important area of support. Uh, as long as we trade above it, you have to respect um, you know, uh, this move. Now, uh, let's have a look at uh, pound CAD. Pound CAD um, is uh, showing some signs that we might have found a low because look at how nicely this descending channel has uh, worked uh, you know, in pinpointing um, the low that we had there, the market actually came back and retested it. So uh, not only we tested the channel support and moved higher, but we also I actually afterwards formed like a double bottom. Um, I was saying the last time we were looking at it, you know, watch out for this horizontal area uh, as resistance. It actually gave us a very nice rejection yesterday, um, but uh, that doesn't mean that we can't finally uh, push higher. Why? Because simply that might have been an ABC. So uh, this 171.70 area, quite an important one. I think that if we finally see uh, the pair pumps through, uh, there's going to be continuation to the upside. So um, obviously, until that happens, you have to respect the fact that we trend uh, that we trade in, in a descending channel. Uh, but I do find the possibility of a break higher to be a decent one. And uh, if that actually happens uh, and we break out from this confluence of resistances, I think that you need to respect it. I, I wouldn't be considered that as a false break. It most likely won't be. Um, obviously, um, you know, for any decent follow through uh, to come uh, for any of the pairs, I want to see cable finally break above this 130 area, right? Because one, this 130 area, um, is, it's the second time that actually stalls price action. Uh, I strongly believe, and I still believe that the chances are very high that this time we're actually going to uh, break through it. If that is the case, if that actually happens, I do think that the market should find the strength to rally to at least 133, which is the confluence of previous support resistance area and the 38.2 from uh, uh, you know, the highs. Uh, that we had in April to the lows that we had in August. Um, Stelio, give me more questions, please. We have uh, three or four more. I mean, we're close to the top of the hour. Uh, do you want to have a look at um, our friend Niraj is asking for Nifty? It's something we, we look at every once in a while. I think it, uh, I don't know if you want to have a look at that. I know he's asked for it for the cu uh, last couple of days, so. Um, Probably nice to have a look at it now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, this is the last time we had a look at the Nifty. I was showing at this triangle. I had explicitly said that the break above this triangle should definitely lead uh, to, uh, to some strong follow through. We actually made it, uh, you know, comfortably to new highs. And now we're pulling back. So far, this pullback, so far, wouldn't worry me if I was bullish, right? I mean, it's somewhat strong, but I don't think that uh, it's enough to worry that it's impulsive uh, one way or another. So um, I think that I would be looking at the previous high as support, 11,170. That might actually do the trick. We are already seeing some nice reaction from the 50 daily moving average. Um, and if actually 11,170 uh, doesn't prove enough, uh, you know, for the correction, we might even see uh, a dip lower towards 10,900. Uh, as always, I've said that plenty of times, you can never uh, guess a corrective move in advance, but, you know, a corrective move can take several forms. One of them can be a triangle. So that's one probability, a triangle. Now, there is another probability that this is going to end up being, uh, instead of forming a triangle, it might um, end up 
you know, producing one more leg lower. So we might see rebound and another leg lower and then higher from there. Um, uh, you know, or even, you know, more complicated uh, cases like a double zigzag or whatever. But uh, whatever the case is, I think this is a healthy pullback. I mean, we've had a move from uh, 9,900 and whatever it is, 40, to where we were with in between only having that's a, an 18% move. And in between, the only thing we had was a consolidation, a tri- you know, a consolidation within a triangle. So I think that, you know, um, as I said, the pullback is healthy and I wouldn't be that much worried if I was bullish. Okay. What else tell you? Okay, uh, we have a couple of more questions. I actually have to go, uh, have to run. So I'll tell you what the, the questions are, and then maybe we can close it. Um, we have our friend Bill asking for oil, and Martin asking for dollar Swissy. Uh, did we have a look Absolutely. at oil earlier? Did Blake have a look at no. oil? I can't remember. Uh, I'm not sure, but I don't think he did actually. Okay. Okay, crude. Now, um, as I've said multiple times, I'm a little bit perplexed with crude because. I know one thing for sure that I'm bullish in the medium to long term, but you know, I can't be sure that this corrective move is over. I mean, I can even see the possibility of an inverted head and shoulders formation. I can tell you two things for sure. One, uh, yesterday's move was yesterday's candlestick was extremely bullish. There's no question about it. Two, we're now back retesting horizontal resistance area, the same resistance area that actually rejected price action the previous time on a daily closing basis. So buying it up here quite dangerous right um and i do think that if we actually do break above this area the chances that uh we're done correcting lower increase substantially so i wouldn't be sorting it but would i be buying it yet nah i'd, I'd wait for more clarity okay and what was the other one, Stelio? You said crude then? And, and uh, dollar ah, Swissy. You use the Swiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we are. Here it is. Okay, dollar Swissy holding this 96.50 horizontal support area. Uh, for the time being, you can just call it trapped between 96.50 and 97.50. Um, unless we break above 97.50. Personally, I wouldn't be buying it no matter what. Uh, 9750 was important multiple times in the past. Uh, the 200 DMA is also roughly there, as you see. Uh, so do I think it can rebound quite a lot higher? Sure it can, but I wouldn't be buying it unless it clears 9750. Now, on the other hand, you know, we, we saw quite an impulsive move lower within likely though a correction so an impulsive move within a correction uh so i do think that that there is a decent chance that we're going to get rejected once again from 97.50 and push lower once more before actually seeing a recovery so my main case scenario here is getting rejected from 97.50 uh 0.97.50 once again um and pushing lower then perhaps stabilizing and rebounding. Uh, one thing is for sure, I wouldn't be persuaded to buy it below 97.50 in any way, okay? So thank you all very much. We'll be in the chat room and as always, we'll be here tomorrow. Let's hope that Dale is gonna be feeling better so he can join us. Thank you very much, Stelio and uh, Blake and have a lovely day.